Wow, <laughs> there's a lot of people in here. Well, good evening. And tonight, I want to share some secrets with you guys. First secret, I really do not like stereotypes. And here are a few examples. Get over your anxiety. You have nothing to be scared of. What's wrong? Are you retarded? You cannot have an eating disorder. You are not skinny. Do these sound familiar to you? Because I've heard them my entire life. And the effects that come with these things are devastating because when I hear this, I just think I am worthless, undeserving, and that I don't need to live. <laughs> well, my second secret. I am clinically diagnosed with manic depressive disorder, social anxiety, and general anxiety. And as far as I could remember since I was young, my depression turned my wrist into a canvas, my brain into a war zone, and my heart a sunken ship of a storm of anxiety. And because of that, I had to go to treatment. I went all across the world from Germany to California with the help of my lovely dad and my mother's support back at home. And what I did there was I recovered. I got better so that I can come back here to tell people this kind of story. But you know, I still struggle on a daily basis on the fact that my condition is still seen as in the head, a phase, something I can just get over. Honestly, that's unhelpful. It's damaging because one in four people will suffer from mental illness in their lifetime. So that's one, two, three, four. One in six adolescents will suffer from mental illness. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And instead of being supported, they're called lazy, attention-seeking, ungrateful, or crazy. So that means behind every door in America, Europe, Asia, wherever you have lived or where you come from, there is a family that knows someone or has someone in their family who's dealing with a mental illness. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> um, and for example, that could be a father coming home from stress, a mother dealing with a panic attack, a teenager dealing with an eating disorder, a lonely grandfather dealing with PSD, PTSD. It could be a good friend dealing with suicide. It could be a coworker dealing with bipolar disorder. It could be me dealing with my anxiety and my depression. And I mean, yes, mental illness has been around for decades, like centuries, um, but it's still not comfortable to be talked about. And because of that, once again, there is this negative stereotype that makes me want to hide from opening up to you guys, opening up to my family, opening up to the friends that I first met on the first day of school. It makes me feel like I'm ashamed and less deserving of sympathy the way physical illness is. And did you know that people who suffer from mental illness are more prone to living 20 years less than the average person without mental illness. That means, 13, that means only 13% of people receive medical help. Luckily, I was one of those percentages. And back to the 20%, it's because of suicide. It's a very serious thing, and people don't realize the actions and the words that they say lead people down this path, because it is the world's second most leading cause of death. Now let me give you some examples. You've seen these movies. Anybody seen these movies? I'm sure you have. The first movie is Black Swan, played by, apologies, played by um, Natalie Portman, who is, you know, being what she wants to be in her lead role of the Black Swan. But she is considered dangerous. Do you know why? Because she has schizophrenia. And this completely makes me uncomfortable. Not, I mean, I don't suffer from schizophrenia, but I've known people who have dealt with this, and they aren't dangerous. Yes, they are chemically different 
in the brain and they do see things visually than how we see life, but they're very sweet. They're very sweet people, I can tell you that. And Jim Carrey, he plays in the movie Me, Myself, and Irene. And he has, the character has um, a split personality disorder and depression. But the funny thing is, actually it's not even funny, it's, it's portrayed as a humorous, a humorous movie and I stand here like, why would you want to portray me? Something that is serious, something I need medication for as a joke. It's ridiculous. And the next one is about fashion. And now, as you all can see, I do like fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman over Christmas posted a picture saying, Target, as someone with OCD, I'd really appreciate it if you wouldn't sell my illness as a fashion statement. This is not the first time I've seen this. It says OCD, obsessive Christmas disorder. Does that sound right to you? I don't think it sounds right. And there's other pictures I've seen like obsessive dog disorder. I get that you like a dog, and I get that you like Christmas, but you do not need to clarify my illness through your obsession. And because of these obsessions, I mean, <laughs> because of these um, impacts, it's led to fear. And here is a survey that I found online in which can tell you that. 91% of people surveyed that they do indeed believe that there is a negative stereotype that exists within society. And 61% of people chose not to tell people about their illness because they fear that it'll affect their personal and professional lives. I'm doing that right now. I'm affecting my personal and professional life. I'm talking to a bunch of strangers I probably will see again or never see. And that scares the crap out of me. <laughs> However, if you can imagine a world without mental illness stereotype, what would it look like to you? I wouldn't feel like a fish out of water in my own skin every day. I'd no longer be scared to ask for help for those around me. And I wouldn't have to ask or choose between courtesy and being honest about how I'm feeling. So depression, OCD, anxiety, schizophrenia, and so on are illnesses, not a choice. I mean, people fear what they don't understand, so why not teach them a little thing every day, step by day? Because why would you judge someone with a flaw in chemistry, not character? So do what you can do every day until your idea becomes real. Break the habit, it's an idea worth spreading. Thank you.